Hello people, welcome back to my channel. So I traveled and I went on a solo trip for my 20th birthday this year. And I thought that I should make a video about solo travel whilst black, solo travel whilst black and female, solo travel whilst black, female and broke. You know, there are loads of hashtags that I could hashtag this video with. So I'm gonna talk about them now. Um, for my 20th birthday, I went to Madeira, Portugal, and it wasn't supposed to be a solo trip, but a few people canceled on me. I say a few, the entire group canceled on me. It is what it is. Um, to be honest, I don't really hold a grudge towards anyone for not coming because I'm glad I went by myself. It was definitely a trip that I benefited from. But yeah, that's why I'm talking about it now because I want to mention a few things that I really wasn't ready for before I left England. And there are a few things that I knew I would experience, but not to the extent that I experienced them that I'd like to share with you guys. So if you're planning a solo trip, if you've thought about doing a solo trip, or if you needed a bit of advice before you left, this is what I'm here for. So the first thing I want to mention is fear. But I think solo travel has to be one of the most anxiety inducing things you could do. And I'm not saying this to scare you away from it. I'm telling you to be prepared for anything. You will be out there alone, especially if you're going to a country where you don't have any family or friends. And the chances of you speaking the language or like the native language is slim, depending on which area of the world you're traveling to. So fear in general will be a factor you have to consider. If you're someone who experiences high levels of anxiety, be prepared to face that. I was afraid to fly. I was afraid to miss my flight. I was afraid to speak to someone who would be aggressive towards me. I was afraid of things that were somewhat out of my control, except for like missing my flight. But um, I had to prepare for that. And once I got on the plane, I was like, oh, mind you, I'd been on planes before, but there's a difference between flying to your home country with your family and flying alone. Be prepared to face your fears. And that's what solo traveling is mostly about for a lot of people anyway. That's definitely why I left England. I wanted to travel with friends initially, but the idea of traveling by myself didn't particularly scare me because I want to travel alone and with people in general. I want my life to be based around experiencing new things. And if I don't start now, I'll never start. So that's the kind of mentality that I left England with. The second thing I'd like to mention is being foreign in general. If you're traveling to a part of the world where you know you will look different to the majority of the public population, I would suggest also being mindful and conscious of that. As much as I would love to say that the world has reached a progressive point where people can just ignore that you're from a different racial background, we haven't. As a society, we haven't progressed enough past prejudice should i say we haven't progressed enough past um racial discrimination we haven't progressed past stereotypes so um traveling whilst black is way more dangerous <laughs> than traveling whilst being part of the major racial group in a country if you're traveling to a country where you don't think you'll fit the general aesthetic should i say or just if you know that you're going to a country and are going to be foreign more explicitly than other people so if your skin tone will give that away to an extent you know anything like that be prepared for looks stares maybe even comments i wouldn't even say don't be prepared for an attack i wouldn't put an attack past that unfortunately there are still people in the world that have very outdated opinions such as one race being superior to yours or their race being superior to yours as nonsensical as that is it is real we do live in a world where people are crazy and they act out their controversial racial beliefs so essentially carry yourself with care it depends on where you're traveling to but different countries will allow you to be prepared for attacks in different ways in england all types of self-defense weapons are banned or anything that could cause harm or life-threatening harm is banned so there are ways around protecting yourself with specific equipment i didn't take anything i didn't want to run the risk of being arrested in a different country i don't have time for that i'm supposed to be on the beach not custody like no one's really trying to sit in a cell for 10 days because someone called me the hard er i'd rather not but at the same time i do think i experienced a racially motivated attack in madeira if you don't know, Madeira is not part of mainland Portugal. It's closer to Africa geographically than it is Portugal. And when I arrived there, I noticed that the population is quite old. And that was like one red flag. Old people are outlandish as fuck. 
that's not to say that young people can't be racist or anything of that nature it's just to say that with old people come old beliefs i was trying to get a taxi from the beach because i went on a little um a walk a promenade from my hotel to the beach but i didn't want to walk back because by the time i had been ready to leave it was dark so i tried to book a taxi and i went into a hotel and asked for a taxi number i was given a number and i thought everything was fine and I thought that I could just pay by card because there are certain taxis in certain countries that will just let you tap a card. Like in England, for example, in certain taxis and black cabs, you can either use cash or they have contactless machines now. So I'm not sure if that's the case for all cities in England, but in my student city and probably in London as well, facilities like that are available. So that was where I first went wrong, assuming that other countries would have the same type of advanced technology for contactless payment. The taxi driver became reckless and like outlandishly aggressive. It was beyond any type of appropriate behavior. I think he was trying to communicate to me that he was taking cash only, but I couldn't understand because he was moving really frantically and he got out of the taxi and chased me back into the restaurant that i got the number from so i was expecting people to come to my not rescue but i was expecting some aid because there were people outside eating with their kids and there were other people who were just eating with friends there were also people in the restaurant that were eating and there were members of staff inside the members of staff were the only people that intervened the people in the restaurant waiters managers were the only people that stopped the taxi driver from potentially hitting me or worse or whatever he was trying to do because he got out of his seat the driver's seat which is on the left side in madeira and he went around the taxi and like chased me as in i was walking and then eventually running off back into the restaurant yelling like yo i need help and he was chasing me i don't speak portuguese very well i don't know what he shouted to the waiters but i do know that he was asked to leave within a minute within a minute of his arrival he was asked to leave. i was distraught i was stressed i was crying i called my friends and i asked them if there were any other taxis that i could get to on an app that could be tracked because there are no ubers over there and then my friend was like actually there are ubers so like that's fine just get an uber i didn't assume that they had uber because i'd already made the assumption that they took contactless payments i didn't want to assume anything more about about travel and transport over there to be fair i also should have known that because uber eats was available but um i got an uber so moral of the story is just be more careful and definitely be prepared for anything when you're abroad but when you're abroad alone be prepared for the worst racism in public nobody called me anything to my knowledge nobody stopped me in my day and insulted me but i did discuss some things generally with a member of public that was very much like right wing attitude and he didn't come across that way at first he was just a fisherman at first but he had started talking about how he was an ex-hotel manager in london he'd met jay-z he'd met beyonce he'd met kanye west and he showed me picture proof of him being hotel manager not necessarily picture proof that he was chilling with Ye and B, but proof that he was hotel man manager. I saw him in uniform, I saw the badge. So I was kind of inclined to believe it. And the conversation started quite casually. At first, I was just stunned that he would catch a fish that big. It was literally like really big. And then the conversation led to me talking about how I was from London. By the way, also side note, do not tell people anything more personal than where you're from. I wouldn't even recommend telling people that you're alone. Luckily for me, I was in a situation where I stayed at a very well secured hotel and I didn't give away that information to just anyone. But on this particular occasion, I did mention that I was here for a solo trip and I'd come from London. Now, that was stupid because had the man followed me to the hotel, that would have been a problem. I don't think I specified which hotel I stayed at. But even still, mentioning that you're alone when you're traveling alone to a stranger is a bad idea. It just so happened to be that this guy presented himself as quite an accessible person. He was a fisherman. It didn't seem like he was interacting with people to do anything suspicious. He seemed like a local. He said he was a local. He lived in the area. He'd, you know, that type of thing. So anyway, um, the conversation went left, complete left. Like Mr. Red Light left. 
and he said a few things that were racially charged. It, they weren't insults, but they did make me feel uncomfortable. Like he mentioned the fact that he literally went on a tangent about how black people victimize themselves and he doesn't see race, he doesn't see color. He, you know, doesn't believe that black people are being any more oppressed than anybody else. It was, to say the very least, <laughs> I had to leave. So try not to engage with that kind of conversation with just anyone gauge your audience well and know who you're speaking to about what because that conversation could have went from people having two different opinions to me now having to call police or go back to the hotel and explain that someone's following me there were just so many things that i didn't necessarily think through because i just assumed they were normal and it's really easy to go from living your normal life at home in your home city and then traveling with the same kind of beliefs because you know how people at home could be it's two different communities you will encounter people with way more different beliefs and controversial opinions to you so just be careful of that let me quickly fix my makeup oh oh i need to talk about the fact that i nearly forgot the fucking pcr test oh -ho -ho! the vlog will show you that i prepared everything to my knowledge to a t i didn't think that i was missing anything i paid for my ticket i got insurance on my ticket i had a hotel i had a method of getting to and from the airport i thought i had secured everything but miss rona came to shake the tables two years of covid was still not enough for me to remember precautions you have to take in different countries i forgot to take a pcr test for my flight back home that could have meant that i'd be stranded in portugal with no hotel room no more spending money no emergency money because i had to use that to get myself out of portugal with the pcr test i would have had no means to secure a room to stay in or food had i made one mistake or as a result of the one mistake i made and if i didn't rectify that mistake i assumed that you only needed a pcr test to leave england and get into portugal my arrival to madeira was very smooth when i got to the airport the only thing i was waiting for was the shuttle bus to the hotel the pcr was done they checked at the airport they didn't make me do another one i was signed for everything i was like cool I've got this. I'm like, what? I paid for myself to fly. I'm doing everything independently. Bitch, I thought I was a superstar. I was out there like, yo, I'm a real woman. I did everything on my own. <laughs> God, I was humbled. The day I had to leave Madeira, I was humbled. It was 10.30. Ah, I even remember the time. I need a therapist for this experience. It was ghetto. And I was doing my final bag check, my final suitcase check. I was checking that I didn't forget any makeup and I was making sure that my shoes were ready. Like I had my outfit ready for the airport and everything. I was gonna get up, get dressed and go. That was it. Something told me. Just double check that you don't need anything medical wise. Like, just double check that you don't need anything to legally get you back home other than your passport. I hit the Googles. I'm typing. I hit the Googles. Google said, ho, oh, my friends, before you hop on that plane, have you got a PCR? I said, what? I was under the impression that you only needed one PCR to get in and out of England. You needed two. Did I even have PCR money, fam? I'm a uni student. Did I even have money for Uber Eats by the fourth day I was out there? No. I had to... I planned money for the ticket and to buy food for a couple days that would stretch and then to go to a restaurant like once or twice. And I did all of that. We're now talking about the final night in Portugal. Who's got money for tests? The way I called Bank of Mummy for a quick £10. I'm not ashamed. The fuck? I'm not ashamed. This woman raised me. She's been wiping my ass. She could send me £10. I called Bank of Mummy. I said, Mum, this is mad. She was like, what's wrong with you? I, I need to get a test. I need to get PCR. I won't make it back. The way I was shaking, I was thinking, yo, I don't even have a Portuguese passport. All I know is obrigado. These people will stop. <laughs> These people will stop me at the airport before I can even finish my surname and say, yo, you're not going home. So I jumped in an Uber. Luckily, there was a women's unit that was open in a hospital or in the hospital. Because I think there's only one hospital in the whole of the area I was in in Madeira. I charged into that Uber. I said, boss, step on it. Fast and furious. Brrr. I didn't even tip him. Oh well, I was broke. And um, I got out of the Uber and I got to the hospital and I was like, PCR, please, PCR, I need to get back home. 
the, the ladies, the receptionist was like, yes, it's fine, it's fine, we'll sort you out. Luckily, I brought my passport. Something told me, pack your passport, pack your purse, go. Don't take anything else, just passport, purse, go. And obviously, hotel room key. So I did the test. It was literally like 30 seconds, swab, swab nose, swab mouth, cool. Um, and I had to wait 30 to 45 minutes for the test results. I knew it was gonna be negative because I'd been quarantining and I'd been doing all the appropriate stuff before I flew and whilst I was in Madeira. So I knew it was gonna be negative, but it took about 45 minutes and the hospital was gonna close around midnight. So like, I was very lucky. I was scraping, scraping luck, like on the skin of my teeth, I made it. And then I got a certificate. I asked for it in paper as well. You think I was ramping? I nearly missed my plane blood. I got the certificate in paper, virtual 2D, Nintendo 3DS, every pdf anything any any version to prove that i can get back on the plane i got it so um that was that was me sorted after that like i didn't have any issue at the airport here is when the story gets peak i'm now at the airport the next day ready to go home and there's a lady who i meet who's from england she's not from london but she's from a city in england she said that she had everything sorted out so i'm like oh, okay yeah that's nice we're going back home i don't think anything of it we got in the line for border control and we got in the line for our passports to be scanned and ID checked, all that stuff. They asked to see my PCR certificate. I pulled up my phone and showed them mine. I got let through to the other half of the queue. Tell me why the lady I was kikiing with had to use, tried to use an NHS box of COVID tests as proof. The way I, like my heart fell into my bum. She, was, she pulled up a picture from her phone gallery. She was like, yeah, I took a test and my husband took a picture of the box you can check. On Google, it says you cannot use NHS or public service provided tests as proof that you've tested negative. I don't know why. I think part of it is just so that they can make more money. I think part of it is that because it's a free service that it's easily played with and altered the results can be changed i don't know but for whatever reason you are not allowed to use nhs tests to travel outside of england or at the time that was the case security held the lady back till this day i don't know if she made it back i don't know i don't know maybe the sandwich that she ate is even still with her in portugal i don't know i don't know about anything i don't know what's going on with her all I know is I got on that plane and I didn't see her on the plane with me. So I I was incredibly scared for her and I hope to God that she made it home safe. If you find this video somehow, girl, I hope you're okay. But word of advice, please just pay the £30 for the PCR express test. You're better off because you nearly... <laughs> you may have never seen Chesterfield again. <laughs> so please pay for your PCR. <laughs> so yeah, I guess one of the key points from that story is have enough emergency money, be prepared enough to travel in and out and get home safely and never underestimate the importance of double checking. Never underestimate the importance of finalizing that you have everything appropriate to get home because you will regret it thoroughly if you don't. Yeah, no, nah, that fisherman took me by surprise still. He went from fishing for genuine fish to fishing to piss me off. Overall, I'm really happy that I traveled by myself. I'm really glad that I got to experience that for the first time, especially for my 20th birthday, because for me, the trip was a spiritual trip and it was about finding myself and beginning to find out who I am as, as a woman, as a black woman, as a person, as a young person. Genuinely, as a human being, I took those seven days in Madeira to spend more time with myself and to bond with myself and your 20s are a funny period in time because you're trying to balance responsibility and not losing yourself in the rat race everyone else around you your age is making it look like they have it all down pat everyone's trying to make it look like they all understand what's going on essentially perfection is an illusion you already know this but everyone who's 20 right now is attempting to make it look like they have it all figured out none of us have it figured out we're all just as lost as each other we're all masking our feelings in different ways and um i wanted to escape that especially for my birthday especially as i'm heading into a new decade in my age so that trip was very meaningful despite the few bumps that i encountered whilst abroad the majority of the trip was spent with just relaxing 
and enjoying the food, enjoying the culture. A lot of thinking, I had a lot of time to think. I went on quite a few walks. I even met some really cool guys whilst I was out there. I met these two boys from Amsterdam and they were really friendly. I showed them around the part of Madeira that I had recognized in the short amount of time I was there. Um, they were really lovely. I only met them on the penultimate day that I was there though. So it was kind of hard to do anything with them activity wise. But we did have dinner one evening and we sat and we talked about the strife of being a young person in 2022. They were very knowledgeable, very, very funny, very sweet. Honestly, it was a great time. I don't have any regrets about traveling by myself. I can tell you that now. There is nothing I regret about people dropping out for my birthday. In retrospect, if I could go back and tell my past self how to organize this trip again, I would say don't invite anyone. I would say save a bit more money, a good 200 pounds more money. <clears throat> Thank your friends for deciding that they wanted to come in the first place, even if they didn't get to, but go on your own because this trip did way more for me as an individual than it could have done with me in a group. Experiencing Madeira whilst inebriated, wasting money on activities that I might not have wanted to do because other people wanted to do them. It just wouldn't have served me more than relaxing, swimming, walking through nature. I went on a whole nature trip. Like I went on a whole guided tour. I was in like six different parts of Madeira in one day. I went to the highest mountains in Madeira. I was literally standing on top of mountains. I visited the highest cliff in Europe. Um, I was in villages hidden away in forests. I was, it felt like Narnia for real. Like this was definitely not South London, but um, I feel like it's important that we do that as people. We step out of our realities for a small amount of time to just get back in tune with what really matters, which is finding your place in the world. It is really easy to get a job and just stick to the functional day by day, work, sleep, eat, repeat. But it is way more, again, way more spiritually nutritional to just go on a trip and look after yourself. So yeah, thank you guys so much for watching. Okay, bye guys.